In rate conversion problems, we're often asked to go from the rate of production or consumption of one substance to the rate of production or consumption of another. Let's say we have a chemical equation with two different substances, substance A and substance B. As you know from chemistry 11, in order to get from substance A to B, they both have to be in moles. To go from moles of A to moles of B, we use what's called the coefficient ratio in the balanced equation. Sometimes that's called the mole bridge. Let's say that we have the grams of A, and we need to convert that to the moles of A. We use the conversion times one mole over the molar mass in grams. Let's say that A is a gas at STP, and we have to go from liters of A to moles of A. Then we use the conversion times one mole over 22.4 liters. Let's say that we need to find the mass of B. In that case, we'd use the conversion times molar mass over one mole. Let's say B was a gas at STP and we want to find its liters. We would multiply that by 22.4 liters over one mole. In chemistry 12, we're dealing with rates. So remember the three rate equations that we had. Rate is a change in amount over change in time. Sometimes in a question, we're asked to find the amount, the mass, or the volume that's produced in a certain time. If we know the rate and the time, we can find the amount by multiplying the rate by the time. Sometimes we're asked how long it will take to produce a certain amount of substance. Knowing the rate and the amount, we can say the time would be the change in amount over the rate. So with all these three equations and with all these conversions up here, we should be able to work our way through quite a few of these rate conversion problems. In this problem, we're using the reaction of aluminum plus hydrochloric acid gives hydrogen gas and aluminum chloride. We're given that the rate of production of hydrogen gas is 0 0.08 grams of hydrogen per second. We're asked to find the mass of aluminum that's reacted in 3.5 minutes. So we have quite a few conversions here. Since we have grams of hydrogen per second, we're going to have to go to aluminum. So in order to go from one substance to another, we have to change grams into moles. So we convert this to moles of hydrogen per second. Once we have the moles of hydrogen, we can then go to moles of aluminum. Once we have the moles of aluminum per second, we have to find mass. And that's grams of aluminum per second. Notice that this is per second and we're given the time in minutes. So then we have to convert to grams of aluminum per minute and this will give us our rate. So let's go through this step by step. We're given that there's 0 0.08 grams of hydrogen per second. We change this to moles of hydrogen per second by multiplying by one mole of hydrogen over the molar mass, two grams. Once we have moles of hydrogen, we then have to find moles of aluminum. Here we look at the mole ratio. There's two moles of aluminum per three moles of hydrogen. So we put that down here. Then we have the moles of aluminum. Now we have to find the grams of aluminum, so we need the molar mass. The molar mass of aluminum is 27. So there's 27 grams of aluminum to one mole. This will now give us the grams of aluminum per second. Since we're dealing in minutes, we have to change the seconds into minutes in the bottom. So what we need to do is to put seconds on the top so that we can cancel it with this and put minutes on the bottom. So we multiply by the conversion 60 seconds per minute. This will give us the rate of the reaction in grams of aluminum per minute. We're asked to find the actual mass of aluminum, which is an amount. If you recall, the amount is the rate times the change in time. So we have to times this rate by the time, and the time is 3.5 minutes. So we times that. Now, what we need to do is cancel out the grams of hydrogen, the moles of hydrogen, the moles of aluminum, and the seconds. We can also cancel out the minutes. What we're left with now is grams of aluminum, which is what we want, the mass of aluminum. So now all we have to do is work out all the numbers, and we're going to be left with the mass of aluminum in grams. So we take 0 0.08 times 2 times 27 times 60 times 3.5 
and then we divide it by left bracket 2 times 3 right bracket. And try that on the calculator and you should get this answer here, 151.2 grams of aluminum. Now we look at our significant digits. We have 2 here, 2 here, 3 here, and 2 here. The 60 is an exact number, so we don't count significant digits with that. And the 2 and the 3 are whole numbers from the equation, so we don't count those either. So the lowest number of significant digits is 2. So we need to round this to 2 significant digits. We can do that by expressing it as 150 without a decimal place. Or we can put it in scientific notation and call it 1.5 times 10 squared grams of aluminum. So that's the final answer to our question. Here's a question in which we're given a single replacement reaction of aluminum and copper to chloride, giving us copper and aluminum chloride. We're given the rate of this reaction in grams of aluminum that's used up in two minutes. And we have to calculate the mass of copper that's formed in 30 seconds. So the rate is given in grams of aluminum per minute. In order to go from aluminum to copper, we must change grams to moles. So we convert to moles of aluminum per minute. Once we have moles of aluminum, we can then go to moles of copper per minute. Since we need the mass of copper, we convert to grams of copper per minute. And since we want to find the mass of copper formed in 30 seconds, we can change the grams of copper per minute to grams of copper per second. Let's see how this is done. We start by writing down the rate, which is 0.84 grams of aluminum over two minutes. Don't forget we put the two in here. Now we change grams of aluminum to moles of aluminum by multiplying by one mole of aluminum over 27 grams, the molar mass. Once we have moles of aluminum, we can find the coefficient ratio in the equation, three coppers to two aluminum, and that will give us the moles of copper. Once we have the moles of copper, we can convert that to grams of copper by multiplying by the molar mass of copper over one mole, 63.5. This expression will now give us the rate of formation of copper in grams per minute. But we're given that this is 30 seconds so we must change the minutes on the bottom to seconds. In order to do that, we multiply by one minute over 60 seconds. Now this whole thing gives us the rate of production of copper, but we're asked for the mass of copper produced in this time. The change in amount is the rate times the change in time, so we must times this rate by the change in time, which is 30.0 seconds. So this thing now will give us the mass of copper. Let's cancel out some units. Grams of aluminum cancels out, moles of aluminum, moles of copper, and the minutes cancel, and also the seconds. So we're left with grams of copper, which is the mass. So now we can find the mass of copper form. We do that by grouping all these numbers together and calculating them. So 0.84 times 3 times 63.5 times 30.0 on top. On the bottom we put this in brackets. 2.0 times 27 times 2 times 60. If you work all this out on a calculator, and you should try it, you should get 0.74 grams of copper. So this is our answer. Now we have to look at significant digits. There's 3 in this one, 2 in this one, 30.0 is 3, 60 is a whole number, 3 and 2 are whole numbers. So the smallest number of significant digits that we have here is 2. So therefore our answer is expressed to 2 significant digits. So that's the final answer to that problem.